How's it going, everybody? Thank you for visiting the clubhouse for another Bad Game Summer 2022 review. Today's game is Castlevania Judgment on the Wii, a disappointing and frankly confusing game that for everything it does right, it also does something wrong. As a longtime Castlevania fan, I really wanted to like this, but in the end, I just couldn't really do it. So because I geek out when it comes to Castlevania, sorry in advance because this will be a longer video than usual. Before we get started, I want to thank you for checking out the channel. I've got a merch store and a donation link in the description. And if you buy any merch, make sure you use the code RAGEQUIT for 15% off. So Judgment is a Castlevania fighting game. And as far as I know, it was the only non-homebrew fighting game to feature Castlevania characters before Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. It's an arena fighter, so think of a game like Soul Calibur, but you've got more freedom to actually run around, and it's basically like that. The story goes that a Time Reaper that has been sent by Gallimoth, he's this boss from Castlevania Symphony of the Night, is going to kill Dracula and change history. This other guy named Aeon creates a time rift and uses it to bring together a bunch of the characters from different time periods in Castlevania history in order to find one who's capable of killing the Reaper. Let me tell you how much I enjoyed not hearing the word multiverse in this. Like, the whole game's story exists in this one pocket universe outside of everything else. So it doesn't mess with canon, it doesn't ruin the other game's stories, it doesn't do anything like that at all. The roster varies, and characters are separated into a light side and a dark side. On the light side, you've got Trevor and Simon Belmont, Saifa Belnades, Grant Dynasty, Shanoa from Castlevania Order of Ecclesia, Eric Lacard from Castlevania Bloodlines, and Maria Renard from Rondo of Blood. On the dark side, there's Alucard, Carmilla, got Cornell from Castlevania Legacy of Darkness, Death, Dracula, and for some reason Gollum, who's been in a lot of the games as an enemy, and was also in Curse of Darkness as an innocent devil or partner to the game's protagonist, Hector. Now, I like big rosters and I cannot lie, so I liked the variety here, but I could have done without a few of the characters and would rather they'd have been replaced. Gollum purely exists to be like this grappler kind of character, and in an arena fighter that requires running around, grapplers aren't really fun. Dracula should be fun to play as, but he's really overpowered, and the camera has trouble seeing around his huge body, so whether you're playing against him or as him, you'll probably be staring at his back most of the time. So while I wanted to see other characters here like Hector, Soma, maybe some of the well-known enemies like the Axe Knight or Frankenstein, I did like that there was some variety here. A cool touch was seeing these characters interact with each other, and being that they're all from different times, some of them recognize each other and some don't. This is where it got kind of stupid, though. For whatever reason, some characters like Saifa are younger versions of themselves. So, for example, when Trevor and Grant meet her, she doesn't recognize them. So, in each of their separate stories that you play through, she fights both of them. The reasons that a lot of these characters have for throwing down is paper thin, too. A lot of the dialogue ends up being some version of, Who are you? I'm so-and-so. Oh, okay. Well, you're in my way, so time to fight, and then the round starts. So while I did like watching these characters interact, the writing was pretty stupid most of the time. And on top of that, because this is in like a pocket universe or dimension or what have you, each character has zero development. I mean, there wasn't really any character development in the 8 or 16-bit games outside of what the manuals told you anyways, but hearing these characters talk and make references to their respective games they're from makes you want to learn more about them. Now, despite the variety in characters, there's an underlying problem, and that's the movesets. They're really limited, and there just aren't a lot of attacks available for each character. You can combo some of the moves together, but basically once you played through all the button combos to do everybody's different moves, that's really all there is to each character, and you're bored and want to move on to another. And that doesn't make for a very deep fighter at all. Further complicating the movesets are the controls, which can be awful depending on what you use. The Wii Remote and the Nunchuck are the default, and they play like total ass in this game. You can also switch to the Classic Controller, which is what I did, and it's a little better. There's also a GameCube controller option if you're playing on the Wii, though for this review, I played it on my Wii U and I didn't have that option since that port is not on the console. Even then, I hate the GameCube controller if I'm being completely honest. I don't know why people like it so much. In my opinion, the only game it's good for is Smash Brothers, and that's it. So the idea of Castlevania as an arena fighter works great on paper. Making it a straight 2D fighter like Street Fighter takes away some of what people recognize and like in Castlevania, which is the whipping candles and sub-weapons and all that good stuff. 
So the idea of having a couple characters fight in a setting where they can run around and collect the sub weapons and hearts and other goodies is a great idea and it's consistent with the series. But where they did something right, again, they screwed up by not putting a lot of variety in the stages, and with a couple exceptions, the stages feel really empty. As I said a moment ago, the fighting system is kind of shallow, and in an arena fighter, that puts the burden of keeping the player engaged on the stages themselves. A few of the stages have traps in them, and there's this one where a monster is destroying the stage over time and forcing you to keep ahead of it while you're trying to beat your enemy. My favorite is the clock tower, where you fight on these big clock gears. You can destroy the pylons holding the gears in place, which drops the gears and reduces the space you have to fight on, thus making ringouts easier. I would have loved to have seen more of that, but as it stands, you'll play through a story or arcade mode once and you'll see all the stages, and most of them do feel faithful to the games, but there's just nothing special about most of them. One in particular takes place over lava, and I don't think I've ever seen so much orange or yellow on my TV before. The game ultimately needed at least half a dozen more stages to keep things fresh. Then there's the art style. Most of the characters look like they frequent BDSM clubs instead of dressing like they're from eras as early as the 11th century, and with the exception of about four games, all took place before the 20th century. With weird spiky costumes and masks and belts everywhere that belts have no business being, the costumes don't fit with the characters at all. Shanoa looks like she's cosplaying as some goth nun, and Grant looks completely unrecognizable dressed head to toe in bandages and with some weird knife weapon which along with his fighting style, looks like he's pretending to be Valdo from Soul Calibur. Why would anybody want to look or act like that guy? Now, of all the costumes, I think we can all agree that the best one in the game goes to Carmilla, who is not only a cool character, but she also has a great-looking costume that complements the plot perfectly, and she looks much better than anybody else in this game. And this has nothing to do with the fact that she has gigantic breasts that are dying to spring out and say hello to the entire world. Nothing at all. Ow! You'll be the one with the enormous tits! <laughs> the music is pretty strong in Judgment. You've got a lot of modernized versions of all the classic songs, and they feel right at home here. The voice acting varies, though. Some of the characters sound decent, and then some, like Maria and Eric, for example, will irritate you and will actually motivate you to beat the shit out of them when you play against them. One unintentionally funny thing I noticed is that a lot of the characters will scream when they're knocked out, and that scream will last way longer than it should, and then they're still actually screaming while the winner is doing their victory pose. It's hilarious. The, darkness. I offer only the game has multiple modes. You got story mode, where you play through each character's path, and there's one of the other playable characters in this who will be a boss to them at the end of their story. Beating the game with everybody unlocks true story mode, where you can do it all over again to get the character's true ending. I'm going to spoil it for you now, after beating the Time Reaper, they each go back to their own eras and continue on through their own canonical games. That's all that happens. Arcade mode is almost totally pointless to play unless you want to just rage out at how difficult and cheap Dracula is at the end of it. I died around 20 times fighting this asshole because he just teleports around like crazy and he drops these symbols on the ground that kind of act like mines and it's really difficult to get around those to get a hit in and then when you do get around them to hit him, he just blocks your attack. That leaves Castle Mode, which works like the adventure modes in Soul Calibur. You go to each different door, and there's a different set of challenges, and beating them can unlock accessories like funny glasses and hats for your characters to wear. Have you ever wanted to play as Simon Belmont with sunglasses? Well, then you're in luck, because this is where you can do it. Also, you have your bar set really low for what's fun. I mean, technically there's also survival mode, but it's the same as every other survival mode in every other game that's ever been made. And uh, I, I, there's nothing else I can say about this. Like, I don't know. What do you want from me? Beating each mode unlocks not only dumb accessories, but also background music, voices, and content for the art gallery. All things that almost nobody has any interest in that don't actually enhance the game. So at the end of the day, Castlevania Judgment had a good idea, but it makes so many dumb mistakes that it continuously hurts that good idea. The bizarre outfits, the crappy controls, the lack of stage variety, and a roster that could have used some more characters and shallow movesets crippled what otherwise could have been a really cool addition to the whole series. There's lots of unlocks, sure, but it requires replaying the game a lot, and the game's just not fun enough to do that. This would have been a much better game had it been more like Dissidia Final Fantasy. All that said, I'd love to see a developer give this game another shot and remake it from the ground up because it does have really great potential. That's all for today's review. There's one more game on the way for Bad Game Summer 2022, so make sure you subscribe to be reminded to check it out when it hits. 
Thanks for watching. Congratulations! You're one of an elite few to make it to the end of the video. Reward yourself by hitting the round subscribe button in the middle, and then check out the other goodies I've got in the links next to it.